Hey guys, and welcome to what is now round 11, day t uh, so the second round of day two yes. here in Cannes, where we have kind of a matchup that we've seen a few times already, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a really different yes. take because... It's a variation on a popular matchup. Yeah, so we have Zoroark, yes. Glycanrock versus Atlas Jirachi, exactly. decks we've seen a lot yeah. this weekend, but we very different. We have a veteran, on the one side of Zorak Lycanrock, we have a veteran of the game, Stephen Mao, most notably the German national champion of 2012. I'm from Germany as well, so I know him quite good, and in my opinion he's one of the best players I know. He, he doesn't play that much recently anymore, okay. but he still has these occasional finishers, so he used to be an absolute beast, making top 16 at Worlds, winning German nationals, winning the European Challenge Cup. Now these days he's half retired, but he's still playing regionals, he's still doing good. And yeah, he's bringing the Zorak Lycanroc deck with Weavile instead of um, instead of uh, Lucario we've seen in Oceania. Yeah. And yeah, so he's playing, it's, it's probably going to be similar to what Benjamin Fan played. I think so. In the last round yesterday. I believe, I believe they still talk quite regularly, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They, they are teammates, so yeah, and they then probably shared list. The other player we have is Andresa uh, Mitrano. Mitrano. So she's actually come from Brazil. Um, oh, she's come okay. over from um, Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, so I think she might have actually travelled with Gustavo. Oh yeah, that's quite possible. Um, and yeah, she's playing a deck we've seen a lot of. Yep. And I hope you guys aren't sick of it. I certainly am not, because this deck is just amazing and it has so much interesting decision making. So, she's playing the Zapdos Jirachi deck and yeah, we will be seeing an interesting matchup. Because yesterday we saw Zorak like a rock Weavile, yep. kind of getting too old by Zapdos Jirachi, but it had interesting tags and yeah, there was some unfortunate prizes for Benjamin, prizing against Alola Grimer twice. Um, yeah, it's a very Steve tricky matchup to, to navigate yes. because both sides have a lot of decisions to make, Yeah, which means this game is not a game that's likely to play yeah. out in the same way twice. Certainly, like, I personally am really hyped for this matchup because I like both these decks. On the one side we have the Zora having these trades, discarding cards, making micromanagement every turn and setting up your game properly. On the other side we have the Zapdos Jirachi deck where you have to map out your game, you have to decide which prizes am I going to take and how am I going to do it and you have to decide how to use your resources properly. And yeah, so both players are setting up. Yeah, uh, we should make sure they know that they can start when they're ready. Um, but both players basically ready to set up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they know. They are just shuffling up. Yeah. Cutting each other's I think I don't know if the round has started. Like, I'm just trying to double check. I think it has, so they can start whenever they're ready. Um, I did mention, yes. but um, so yeah, we, we should see it. an yeah. interesting game because these you are two decks where, depending on what you see early in terms of your early Jirachis and your early trades, your game plan entirely changes because exactly. you have different resources at different times and you have to keep thinking about this. Yeah. Uh, but actually, looking through uh, yeah. Andres's list, I see one copy of Ultra Ball. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It, it looks very similar to what um, Isaiah Williams used yeah. to do in Oceania. He played one Ultra Ball as well. We see the straight Zapdos Jirachi with four Zapdos for Jirachi. No tech attackers. Are, well, it has Otapu Kuku GX, of course, this big threat that is in every Zapdos deck. But we don't see the tech attackers we saw last round. With no, There's no, no rainbow possible, options exactly. in here. No Nihilag or no crazy stuff like a no. Lucario. <laughs> I mean, the Lucario yesterday really yes. did swing the match up against Benji Certainly. so here I think Steven might be kind of relieved mm -hmm. that that's not an option so yeah we will be seeing something similar to Oceania um, International's finals but of course it's different players they adjusted their decks it's later so their plans probably change accordingly and they are both prepared to face their opponents like both certainly went into this tournament expecting to face the other matchup this is a matchup so, you're predicting yeah. to see and Andressa's going first, starting with the Jirachi. Of course, her odds are very high, and it's always she plays four Jirachi just to maximize the chances of draw, getting it early, getting it going, making yep. sure she gets everything she needs. And she's facing, uh, ben benching her Oranguru, being her only, uh, being her additional ability draw. We saw many Zapdos decks playing with the Striker, but Andressa's going for the kind of more aggressive, kind of more straightforward option of just having this basic Pokemon. I think it's also, uh, there is a weird l w situation where you may wish to attack with the Oranguru because the Psychic attack yes. can actually hit some decent yeah, numbers yeah. against the likes of Pikachu, it's, Zekrom, it's GX. Quite, it's quite a good attack. However, Andres only plays 8 energy, so... She doesn't really want to have to put that yeah. many in. <laughs> yeah, but she has great energy acceleration in Tapu Koko Prism Star, so she might actually be using it, just as we saw Robin almost attack with Absol last game. 
An interesting thing here is when Andressa opts to put down the, the Absol after playing the Lily, if, if I'm pretty sure she played Lily and then put down Absol. I could be mistaken. I think she made up the other yeah. way. Yeah. Because, when it, because that would explain why she did that decision. The Absol not really something you want to use against Zorax. It's because Zorak is like the only deck in the format that doesn't make use of Jirachi. Yeah. This amazing Pokemon, basically, we see it in every deck. So the episodes, of course, meant to disrupt it a bit, to make it a bit weaker. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Zorak not playing it, not needing it, not having a space for it as well. Yeah, it's a very tricky thing to have to navigate because the Zoroark can, can kind of condense itself down into both attacker and engine. Yeah. The Jirachi is only engine, which means... Yeah, also, Zoroark doesn't really tricky. benefit from, the lot, from the, all the switching cards. So, yeah, it doesn't really fit into the deck. And here we see Steven opening with a Zorua, getting a Lily. However, he didn't get too much value out of a Lily because he couldn't play any cards first. He just played it right away. Now using a Nest Ball... Having a Pokemon communication as well. So, so it looks like. Actually, uh, let's have a look at his list because Benjamin Fam yesterday he opted to play those Great Bolt people he did. used to play earlier. But people like Stefan in Oceania, he replaced those Great Bolts that traditionally were in the deck with a new Pokemon communication just because this card is like. It has no R it has less RNG, right? You need, yep. still need a Pokemon in your hand. But it kind of feels better to pick what you're getting. But it's also very much a case of because you have quite so many options available to you. Uh, you have a seriously like deep like list of things of like okay, this turn I would like of my evolution lines exactly <laughs> yeah. this one thing, and I have oh. all of the others. So Pokemon communications like I'll save you for later. And here we see a big thing for Steven. He's getting down this double threat we've been I've been talking about yesterday. We've been talking about yesterday. We discussed this. People like to put down Ditto and Grimer at the same time, just so your opponent is not able to take a knockout on both. Yeah, it's because really important because if you don't, they just go Zapdos, Energy, Guzma, give me one of them. Yes. And then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, now exactly. I have no way of ever really getting the lockout. Yeah, and if you put down the other one later on, the same thing happens again. And if you rescue Scratcher, the the grimer it happens again yeah it's it will keep happening yeah every time you put it one down at a time like it's gone these zapdos decks are simply designed to guzma up your small pokemon as often as possible especially when and they here. know that if they let it evolve they're stuck and here, here we already see what would have happened if steven <laughs> had not put down both at the same time andressa already having her zapdos already having an energy and using jirachi's ability to grab a guzma having everything she would have needed to take out a single knockout. And yeah, Steven valuing this double threat so much that he opted to go for over Zor additional Zoruas. Yep. Only having one Zorua in play, getting a knockout on his Ditto. He and the Ditto is knocked out and put into the loss zone. Yes. Uh, oh, prioritizing oh, oh, oh. it here because this oh, means okay. a fairly easy, Steven, very nearly missequence yes. there then. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> almost doing the same thing Stefan did in Oceania, drawing first when promoting, but thankfully, he yeah, <laughs> thankfully okay. he didn't look at the card, so everything is fine. Yikes. And, oh, that that was, is a yikes hand. That is unfortunate, but thankfully Steven at least got a Pokemon of this one card <laughs> he, he lilied into. So we can use the Pokemon communication. Probably, Probably grab some Savage Zorak here, yes. just so we can try and draw some other things he can play. Certainly. He could get an Alolan Muck as well, but that would be quite a greedy choice. Yeah. Leaving himself with a single Zorua, a Muck and nothing else. So, It's a really big deal actually, because what will happen is, is that whilst you could make the greedy play and occasionally that's correct, here Andressa already yeah. kind of has a setup that you're okay. going to have to deal with anyway. Yeah. So you have to go right long-term game plan. We all have to do this. All she would have needed was one switch and Steven would be stuck with nothing but an Alolan Muck. Uh, which, also it is worth noting that the for a DCE, the Grimer is actually capable of taking a knockout on a, a Sleep Jirachi. Uh, so this <laughs> also... You really want this to happen. <laughs> well, it's more of a he doesn't have... If he can't evolve it this turn, it's not yes. the end of the world. <laughs> Because it actually still kind of has a use. Yeah, but of course this opens up the possibility for Andressa to just Guzma again. And then she will basically... Well, she will be... Another uh, yeah, communication. She will not have to deal with Alolan Mark this game. If she manages to have a Guzma now. Of course Steven still has a rescue stretcher. But 
this rescue stretcher usually means that uh, yeah, rescue stretcher usually means that he, he will only put on a Lauren Grimer. But oh, this is huge, Steven! After this disappointing Lily for one, managed to get another Zorua and even the Lowland Mark. So it looked very grim for him, but it went on great. Well, and now we see him basically set up, and Dresser being under lockdown. And yeah, now it's it a, will a be huge really factor hard. because yes. having access to. The Pokemon communication. So, trade, as strong as an ability as it is, drawing through your deck, you are discarding resources as you go. A Pokemon communication means you can kind of re kind of conserve some resources and still get to your cards, unlike with Ultra Ball, where you also yes. have to discard more things. Yes. But now we have the power of alchemy in play for, uh, from this. Makes Andressa's turn an awful lot more exactly. difficult. Like, just look at the board. All look at Andressa's Exactly. Her <laughs> entire bench is useless now. And yeah, she's going for the Guzma right away, realizing that Alolan Mark has a huge retreat Does cost of four. she have the four. Electro Powers? She might not have it, otherwise she probably wouldn't have hesitated here, but she's figuring... Yeah, Steven's turns weren't too great, and he or he traded a Guzma away last turn. He plays a Zorak Lycanroc variant, so he probably doesn't even play that many, like two or three is what He's I would expect. Two. Probably no other switching card either. Like he has the Ace Roller, of course, but the Ace Roller means re removing the Loader Mark from play, and this is basically all, all Andressa wants. Yeah, if he is forced to Ace Roller here, Andressa is almost certainly going to be able to get to the Guzma the turn after to KO the Grimer before it gets to evolve again, yes. and basically removes the option uh, from Steven entirely. So a smart play from Andressa, Guzma ring up with the Loader Mark, realizing that Steven is struggling to set up, is struggling to get going and putting something that's with a huge retreat cost and no attacking option into the active position and yeah threatening to knock it out next turn so we also see steven's just trying to slowly build up the zarak because these are decks are very good when they have multiple in play so they can see many cards each turn and having to kind of keep digging through because with so many one-offs and like low counts that we often see in Zarak lists, you do need many trades to get to all of the pieces. Also, uh, I think worth mentioning is that Aether Roller would be fine here as well, because if Steven manages to to remove this Alolan Muck and put the Grimer back on the bench, and Ressa already used Guzma twice in a row, true. by the way, to Guzma yeah. Medito and the Alolan Muck. So even if she had the Guzma for Alolan, Alolan Grimer, it would be her third Guzma. And Which leads to very yeah, low exactly. on, uh, So she counts. would have taken. Oh uh, yeah, he would receive an Ace Roller, sadly removing the ability from the Lola Mark. But yeah, as I said, it is fine. She only took a single prize using two Guzma, so, so she will use a third Guzma if she can to Guzma up with the Lola Grimer. But Steven still has this Rescue Stretcher. Well, he has it in the prizes, but he might draw it out, use it later on to bring the Lola Grimer back, and she would be forced to have her last Guzma then. Yeah, Riot is beating then. From Zorok GX from Steven. Only for 80, not quite the knockout. Uh, 110 yeah. HP being yeah, here we're annoying for the Zorok because yeah. it means I you mean, have to have the full bench yeah. to one hit KO. 110 is usually not a huge end to the third Guzma in a row. <laughs> those Zapdos decks are just crazy with those. <laughs> Going for it again and again. Uh, so Steven's only playing the one copy of Rescue Stretcher. Yeah, yes, think. and it's in his prizes, so there won't be any Alolan Mark anytime soon. But he might still draw it out for prizes. And yeah, Steven really displaying what the weakness of these Zorak decks is. As we've seen yesterday, those early turns are really what decides the matchup. If Zorak stumbled, like you need to get all these basics, you need to evolve them, you need to draw to your stuff. You need so many Pokemon to start dealing damage, and if you cannot draw it in, into it in time, your opponent might just Guzma, Guzma your biggest weaknesses, take easy prizes, go ahead, and really disrupt you and hit well, you. Well, it becomes to a point where when the deck is more consistent than Zoroark in its <laughs> early turns, that is yes. concerning of like how consistent the deck is, yeah. because Zoroark. We've seen for the entire last season. Admittedly, that was with the likes of like Tapu Lele for Bridget and getting your board set up immediately. Yeah. Zorak used to be like the paradigm of consistency. And now Zapdos and Jirachi just got hang on, we can do it <laughs> another way. But worth mentioning as well is that I, I usually always consider like the first two turns the frame within Zorak needs to operate. So like you only got to play a certain amount of games. Like no matter how many Bridget you used to put into your Zorak deck, there was always like 10-15% left. But you will with the Bridget maybe even 20 or more. 
So like most percentages were the games you had to accept, those were yeah. lost. Whereas and you here had the <laughs> remaining 80% and you had to do what's in your power to just make sure you win those games. And yes, we see Steven having a setup, so <laughs> are having all play now. There three we go. Zorak and Dressa being very low on Guzmas is certainly something that plays to Steven's advantage. He might might be able to win this game without even being in need of this Alolan Mark because Andressa doesn't play these fighting threats, so all she really does is attack with Zapdos and maybe get one attack with the uh, uh, Tapu Koko GX. So what Steven wants to do is attack with Zorak, don't leave, don't leave yourself vulnerable, yeah, make sure you have a good board and keep using this Acer Roller, but actually... Well here he, d he doesn't really want to be benching the Rock Ruffs because those are easy prize cards. Yes. Yeah, Sneasel's like, fine because that Sneasel's are, like if, even when he evolves it, he can take a guaranteed knockout with the it. The Rockruff is, is a little bit more awkward to take the KO with, but I still think he needs to be careful in just making sure there are no easy prize cards for just to take because he needs it for the damage output. But he's also playing copies of Kukui and yeah. things like that, so he can avoid going is, too deep with it. The thing is, Steven wants to use Ace Roller, so when you Ace Roller, you have to rebench the Zorua anyways, and. Sure. And Dressa already used free Guzma, so if she wants to take an easy knockout, she would better think about it very carefully. Which also, because she still has access to her escape last. rope. Yes, okay. So but uh, yeah, Steven has with Zorak sitting on his yep. bench, so... He's just going to promote yeah, these and go, right, exactly. it's fine, you can hit these. They're not going anywhere, because yeah. 80 damage to a Zorak is basically nothing. They're so yeah, this, used to that. So this would look pretty solid in general you would think like okay Steven now just don't attach too many energy so you don't get punished by the Tapu Koko GX and then you will be fine as long as you spam your Acer Rollers but if we think about it Steven already used an Acer Roller the other's prized the, the other's prized and he has traded away his pulpit so he currently does not have access to any heal anymore yeah all of it is gone or prized very awkward for him to try and navigate keeping himself in the game knowing what he's already priced because yes. otherwise he's going to get to the point of going ah okay well everything I need is over here <laughs> in my prize pile and I can't take them quick enough to get to the Ace Roller yeah so what Steven will probably be doing is he will have to retreat those Zorax once they are damaged and I mean this is fine in the end he has to tap Lele on the bench anyways which is considered an easy to more or less easy to prizes so and yeah it will be as I mentioned many times Andressa's last boost or so his best bet is really using clean and bulky hitters and hoping that Andressa can't take big one shots and meanwhile switching around the attacker so she can't take any knockouts at all and hoping that like basically what you want to do is like don't give up two more prizes mm -hmm. because if she takes two more prizes then she can Guzma for something like a Tapu Lele or a damaged Zorak later on yeah it means that the Tapu Koko later on could just come in choice yes. band one modifier and take out the Lele yes so, so very Andres tricky yeah so Andres on the other side probably wants to damage Zorax, use Tapu Koko whenever she can, like if she can use Tapu Koko GX that's certainly what she wants because we have free energy in Steven's squad so Tapu Koko, Choice Band, Electro Power would be a knockout and it would be great for her because then she just goes down to two prizes and then she goes on to damage Zorax and just makes Steven retreat and damage again and again until there's a damage Zorak then use her last Guzma to take the so knockout and the game. one attachment from yeah. the Prism Star Tapu Koko to a the Zapdos. single attachment, that's huge actually. It, it, it does mean that the Tapu Koko GX later on is going to be a little harder for her just to pull off. She has to get the attachments in manually now. Exactly. And Steven will probably not allow her to no, do that. No, it'll be very much he just will, trying to hunt those down. He will be, yeah, he will be taking knockouts on those Zapdos every time, but yeah. She kind of desperate, only playing 8 energies, yeah. seems to have worked with one and has to use this Tapu Koko just to keep attacking. So, question, we just had a question from the chat about uh, if uh, Stephen's playing the copy of Nanu. Uh, so Nanu, uh, very useful uh, support yes. for Darkness Type Text, but Stephen's actually not including it in his list yes. uh, because well, yeah. it's Nanu. hard to find space if you're also not playing like the pure Dark lists. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to fit um, the Nanu and Zorak, especially if you try to make your deck as consistent as possible to survive those early turns. But Nanu, if you reach this mid game, Nanu is such a huge threat. 
you can get rid of Wostakulele, you can get Mug into play easily, and you can replace anything that you don't want on your bench with a Zorua, so for example, or a Lowland Grimer and turn it into a Zorua for a Lowland Mug. It's just such a good card, and it kind of resembles this parallel city that we had last format that you oftentimes use to just to just get rid of the liabilities on your own bench and then you just field blow it away, put on better Pokemon and mm -hmm. Nano so basically being very similar. A Mallow, one of the most difficult cards to play correctly when you're yes. playing Zoroark because you suddenly have access to literally all of your cards and yeah. you have to go, okay, I want two. Which two yeah. do I need? Because if I don't have them and I don't choose these wrong, we could lose the game entirely on this decision. Um, at this level, these players, uh, Stephen, a veteran of the game, I don't expect that to be an issue. Uh, yeah. A lot of players like, get to a point where you're just very practiced going, okay, this turn I want to achieve this. And then you build your Mallow around that. Yeah. You kind of work what, out what you need. One thing about the Mallow is, like, usually you try to trade and build up your hand so you know your future turns. And sometimes when you're with, you use this Mallow to get the missing pieces. But the thing is, you only have this one Mallow and you, prob you always only use one per game <laughs> at maximum. So when you use it, you have to be aware that you won't have any search, that you don't have to any search for specific cards anymore. So you have to make sure that vote, that you get the maximum value out of it. That you know that your future turns will be fine, and you have the cards you need for them. Yeah, it's. And Stephen opting to attack with a damaged Zorak, realizing that he doesn't have much heal, he doesn't have too many double colorless energy, so he can't really afford to switch around too much, and he's willing to take the risk with uh, Zorak that has 130 HP left attacking attacking with it and taking the risk of getting a knockout. I think so earlier on I believe he ultra pulled away one of the DCE which he may oh. be regretting now. It may yeah, have been yeah. because if he hadn't seen the, se the second Acer Roller was prized. That would be And huge. if that was the, the case, I, I know he was definitely considering it off an ultra ball earlier on. If that was the case then he's probably going, ah, I need to now kind of move things around a bit, it's going to be quite tricky. That would be huge, it's meaning that Andressa now only needs two damage modifiers to take the knockout on the Zorak. <coughs> Which is considerably more easy, uh, the choice bands. Yeah, uh, she also plays multiple Kukui. Oh, and, okay. And Shrine of Punishment, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a look. Yeah, as well. Yep. Sant Santuario de Parisao. <laughs> Well, there yeah. we go. This should be Shrine of Punishment. So she has two Shrine of Punishment, two Professor Kukui, so she can use those as well. The Zorak is at one, sitting at 130, so a Kukui and an Electro Power or a Choice Band will do the trick. Alternatively, she can just put down Shrine of Punishment and um, hit for a little and then hope to that the Shrine of Punishment does the rest in the meantime. Yeah, well, the Shrine of Punishment also, if she can get it into play now starts weakening up the whole board basically yes. for Steven it, and it would be huge basically it means that oh there we see it is. it's really big because this just now means that this damage will stick because Steven still hasn't got to the Acer Roller and it means that very quickly things get into range that a couple exactly. of hits from a Zapdos and they're just gone yeah so if Andres is able to pick up this knockout this turn it would be huge for her she will be down band. to two prizes there's the choice band there's one of the damage modifiers. She just needs one more, and of course an energy and a switch as well. Oh, she is already down three escape pods, already having retrieved this turn. And switch. Uh, that's an uh, energy lotto, but yeah, she's yep. getting an energy off it. Having the energy of the second card already, looking for all seven. Anyways, just to make sure to get maximum information of your deck. Sometimes it's hard to remember what's left there. It's just, always nice when your opponent a, yeah, puts exactly. a booklet hill down. And yeah, you're exactly. like, I have a free bench spot. I was going to have a quick browse. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I've lost. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn Hill really oh, and, and, and there we see the switch, oh, Electro Power, huge. and the Choice Band. The knockout, Steven getting immediately punished <laughs> for not retreating with Zorak. Really and suffering by his low resources. And now Andressa down to two prizes. Yeah, really big turn. We have seen that these uh, Zapdos decks are able to do that whilst their base damage of uh, 10 normally is not you know that's not very good damage output at all it's very easy for the deck to kind of climb into range so that we can yes. get to the bigger knockouts you know we saw yeah. it a few times yesterday with people kind of throwing down triple uh, electro power uh, here it was one plus choice band and this all kind of combines to mean that it has some reach to take big one hit knockouts or uh, take finish things off from out of range uh, which can punish players for going right they need 
five cards to hit this combo. Yeah. There's no way they have all five. And they just consistently can find them. And here Steven goes for the Weavile. A solid play because he can make sure to evolve his Rockruff on his bench into a Lycanroc so he doesn't have an easy target anymore. <coughs> Wanting to get maximum value out of his Pokemon. He also has the Counter Stadium which is actually a really big deal yes. as well. Replacing the Shrine of Punishment so he doesn't get damaged every turn. And he's using this Weavile. It might get punished because he. This, this means he has to evolve the Rockruff. And it also means that if he puts anything else down, like a little small basic, it can get Guzmat, and this would be the game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, of course, Andressa needs an Electro Power, or Professor Kukui first to even take the knockout on this Weavile. Well, and so the Weavile's HP being 90 is actually. It yes. requires a damage modifier, and I can guarantee Andressa is not really happy if she has to use one to take the knockout this turn, because that's one less damage modifier to finish off one of the GXs or things with more HP that she needs to deal with to finish the game off. But if things go well for her, she might actually be able to close the... No, actually, never mind. She can't use the top... Uh, I'm always thinking of the top of Coco GX, but of course her, top of her Coco Prism Star is already gone, so she doesn't really have the threat of top of Coco GX anymore. And you will have to play the rest of this game with nothing but Zapdos. So we see Escape Rope. I expect Steven's probably consider going to the one of the Zoroks. Yeah, he still didn't draw into his Ace Roller, otherwise he might yeah, otherwise he could just send up a wall and like Ace Roller it. I think he probably uh, yeah, back. I think if he had the Ace Roller he'd probably push the Lele here. Yeah. And it's going right, cool, that's good. Yeah, the, Le the, the Lele's risky however because well, we've it's seen, easier to we've knock seen out. how good these damage modifiers are, we've seen how strong they are. And this Layla sitting at 160 only. Okay, doesn't, the 10 damage don't really matter, 3 damage modifiers would take the knockout on top of Layla anyways. Reaching 170, Zorak needs 4 damage modifiers, so very unlikely that we see this knockout this turn. But the damage, of course, is huge. Steven doesn't have access to Acerola, so all he can do really is reach, reach this um, Zorak back into Weavile next turn and attack again and hope that Andressa doesn't have Guzma for the knockout. Uh, so the other thing is, is that it's not. You can but take the knockout on the Zapdos again, but it's not really getting him anywhere because Andressa will now get big yeah. damage in, and she only then need, like if, if he promotes, if you can get to a Weavile to take the knockout because oh, oh that's and the shrine of punishment this is really important because the 80 damage of the zapdos is not that much but with the 10 damage already on the zorak the shrine of punishment starting to take up it will get speed it will get to be so much easier to guzma the zorak for the last two prizes basically it only means that one extra damage modifier will be required to take the knockout which is a lot easier to find with access to double Jirachi on the bench and the Oranguru uh, if, if the hand size gets small enough. And we exactly. see the last Tapu, uh, the and last the Guzma. Guzma. I think that was the, the last Guzma. Yes, the last one. So, so we're at 110, 110 damage so far. Plus the plus Shrine of uh, Punishment. So up to 130. Interesting play here. Andressa probably whiffing the switching option, figuring that if she would not attack, it would be really bad for her, so she just opts to boost him up this Tapu Lele, attacking it and hoping that the Shrine of Punishment does the rest. I'm not sure if I... No, it has to be the last Guzma. She Guzma, yeah, she's used all Guzma, of the... Ditto Prism Star, yep. Alolan Mark, Alolan Grimer and now the Tapu Lele. So all four Guzma are gone, meaning that if Steven retreats with Tapu Lele, it will sit on the bench safely. But he does have to use one of his DCEs to do it because the Absalom play, or yeah, he can, or use, he his can Guzma. use Guzma or the unit energies, Yep, which is has as well. Uh, no, he can't use the unit because of the uh, Absol. Oh yeah, The right, Absol right, uh, actually right. doing work in this matchup as well because exactly. <laughs> and he yeah, wants to retreat and he Steven, just can't. <laughs> Steven using Lycanroc to pull up the Zapdos. A smart play in my opinion because he's gone through so many of his Zapdos and Andressa really playing four copies of them, playing eight lightning energy. She also plays two rescue stretcher but it's getting harder and harder to get those Zapdos going every turn. Well, so especially with the Tapu Koko having gone earlier, the, uh, there's a lot of energy in that yes. discard pile now, which means that to get to both the Zapdos, which she's can yes. do with the stretcher, um, and the energy and the switch card. Yes, it's just, it's so just an much awful art. thing to ask and for. Yeah, Steven sitting in a pretty comfortable position right now. I'm not sure how Andressa plans to pick up this last knockout on the Tapulele actually, because she already used two Shrine of Punishment as well, and she only placed two. So. Shrine of Punishment won't put any more damage on the board. 
she doesn't have any goose mask left. There is there I'm was an sure. argument there to go for one of the uh, to go basically after the Zoroark or something because we know Steven has to attack with the Zoroark at some stage. Um, so that would potentially have been an option, but we see the Zapdos, a third Jirachi is now in, in play. So that if Andras does have access to any switch, she can keep using multiple Jirachis this turn. Uh, the also, first one is asleep. But I also don't see any um, call pad on her list, so she won't really. So I don't really see any way for her to get a knockout on this Tapulele anymore. However, what she could do is just attach an energy to the Zapdos, wait for a bit, just end your turn, wait until Steven takes a knockout, put another energy into play, use Thunder Mountain and Tapu Koko GX plus damage modifiers to take a knockout on a Zorak. So there is a knockout on the... And oh... oh. Okay, so she she declared the attack before playing the Electro Power there, I yes. think, right? And Steven's like, hey, well, hey, look. And she's already taken a prize. And then showing him the Electro Power. I and Steven think they're like, going to need a judge, but... And if I'm correct, that I believe that is a double prize penalty, actually. Yeah, it usually is. But this game looking... Okay, Steven... Uh, I think Steven's going to allow it? Yeah, Steven... Uh, actually... Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, she but, took the prize, did she but not? But she took the prize. She took the prize. Oh, no, 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 she no, didn't. no, 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 never mind, never mind. Too late. It's fine, that's, that's it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah never mind, never mind. She, she was on two prizes. Yeah. We've been talking about this <laughs> for a bit. Otherwise, Sorry, guys, it's a little yeah, early. We yeah. haven't had enough coffee yet. <laughs> I, uh, was, I was like, <laughs> it's, hand, it's, 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 it's fine, they resolved it. Her, her hand motion for the prizes was just confusing for me because. Yeah. Uh, of course, otherwise Steven would not be attacking with this Levi right now. He would be using GX just to make sure that it's that um, she has to take seven prizes. But yeah, very, it's one of those things of having to make sure you get your sequencing just right. Yes. And also, an unfortunate play for Andressa. I don't know why she even opts to attack the Weavile because, like, conserving these energies, trying to get more than one into play. Would seem more important so that she gets access well, she's to also filled her bench space with all these Jirachi, so even yeah. the type of cocoa, even yeah, if she so could conserve them. Yeah, so it looked to me like she just managed, like she just intends to like sacrifice those Jirachis. Because Steven already used the Lycanroth, she used Guzma, he used Guzma, so he might have been not able to um, Guzma up the energy as to well being forced to maybe pass or something. But yeah, okay. now there's really no way for Andressa to win anymore. Well, so an outside of having all of the remaining electro powers in hand, and, and escape rope, and escape rope, oh yeah, yeah, and all the damage modifiers to try and hit a one-hit knockout or something, but that seems somewhat yeah. unlikely at this stage. Uh, also, she played multiple escape rope. She has one in her prize or some. I'm not sure if she has any uh, escape yeah. rope. But and yeah. one of the electro powers is in there as well, so escape. the numbers aren't even possible. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, I think Andres is probably just going to go right. Is there any way we can? Yeah, she's still looking for a deck, so, so she's probably like, can I can I do this this turn? This is well, she's aware that this is the last turn she's getting. She can get to the the energy through the Volkner uh, card that we've seen really used efficiently in the Zapdos lists. Of okay, well, we can switch for most of our decks using the Jirachis, but occasionally we want very specific things, so we can just Volkner for it to guarantee it. Uh, a and switch. She's just using the switch. Takes the prize card. At which point, if yeah. Steven has any energy, he's just gonna yep yeah, promote. Energy dangerous rogue. Dangerous and rogue. GX attack four. And this is an awful lot Steven. of damage. Um, as we see, Steven wrap up a game. Look, he played. Yes, I, honestly, I want to say he played that fantastically well. Yeah. He best. started so slow and to come back and find a way to get back into that game exactly. from starting so far behind, having his alone and grime yeah. his ditto knocked out so aggressively. Uh, and but basically having using and exploiting the fact that Andres used multiple Guzma very but, early. Yeah. Exactly. Those Guzmas were really what decided this game. Like Andres are being able to take that knockout on the Zora with a double um, damage modifier seemed like a turning po seemed like the point where Andres had the game almost but then not being able to close it out, using her last Guzman, not drawing the damage modifiers needed, and then this unfortunate misplay with uh, for where she forgot the electro power and yeah, announced attack it's... earlier. So it really turned the game into Steven's favor, and he managed to win this game without defaulting for his normal strategy, which would be use a lowland mark, 
use yeah. those AC rollers, use Pulpit to recycle them. No, he didn't heal at all. He used the AC roller as a switching card basically only. And nothing other than that. It's a very weird way of having to play the game because he's coming in with a game plan and this is what we see Zoroark do very well is it has it might have a game plan, but depending on how the cards fall, exactly. it can really adjust on the fly to kind of go from Okay, right, we're going to kind of slow you down to actually we can just use this tactic instead because you had to use too many resources to even disrupt me early. Also, an unfortunate thing for Andressa was that she had to use this Tapu Koko Prism star. Because, just the one? Yeah, exactly, because she whiffed energy for turn, so to just keep attacking, she had to use it. Usually, you want to use it to have lots of energy in play so that you have this big threat of Tapu Koko GX, but whiffing one's energy is always being. Be always being under pressure to keep attacking, being forced to use that, was very unfortunate for us. Guess what I see in a prize card to Steven? Oh. This card, <laughs> just, just as much as Jirachi likes to sleep, this Alolan Grimer likes to be in the prizes. Really Seems. does like hiding away, out of, out of harm's way. It probably fears Zapdos, it probably knows that if it gets benched yeah. it's getting knocked out and it's probably going... It's probably, it's I'm not probably too far. seeing the destiny of <laughs> Ditto Prism Star being Guzmat and sent to the Lost Zone all the time thinking, oh no, I'm not doing this. I'm just chilling in the prizes here, guys. But fortunately for Steven, it should be the second prize he takes. So if he just manages to set up early, get something going, he can put Ditto and Grimer into play later on simultaneously to make sure he gets the lol in mark anyway. So just as a, a quick uh, heads up, we were talking uh, about you know players doing uh, well and having a uh, Stephen having a long history in the game. I've just had a very quick glance at the uh, the uh, rankings on Limitless, mm -hmm. and I can't see anything listed for Andressa. Oh, which interesting. I don't know if so. If she is, as she's from Brazil, it's a very high chance that we've just missed some top, some results. But because we don't have that many results from, yeah, we usually we have, have all of them. We, okay, we actually, well, in that case, we should have. So yeah, we have. Like Robin is very, <laughs> he, he's very, he's very careful and re really collecting is. all the results from all the region. He tries to list anything he can get, and he has a lot of friendly Latin American players that help him with it, collect the results, and send it to them. So yeah, shout out to those guys for keeping it. Uh, yeah, for helping us with that. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. When if Vanessa doesn't have any previous accomplishments, at least any we are not aware. Of. I mean, we aren't tracking the yeah, entire exactly. history of Pokemon. We're just basically starting with the cash <laughs> era we started with. So, also, it might be that some we missed some early special events because in the early time when we were mm -hmm. still developing, we didn't have as many people helping us with it. Um. But. Yeah, Andressa not being that accomplished, so still huge shout out to her for making yeah, this far, exactly. sitting here in day two, playing against one of the veterans of the game, putting up a fight, and yeah, let's see if she can if she can pull it out in the second game. She's had an unfortunate start, starting the Tepu Koko GX. Yes. Uh, basically this, the worst starter this, because this you can't far. ever use that ability now. And it's a two prize uh, is thing for Stephen to just yeah. go, right, cool, we're going to like it, rock that at some stage. Her, yeah. It's it's her only GX. You always want to. It's the only ability that only activates once you put it into play. So it's really a big trump card you want don't want in play other than the turn you need well, users to finish your game. It's basically. also a weird thing of when it's not in play, it's very easy to forget about it. Exactly. Like, even if you know it's in the deck, it's you, there is so much going on in your board state. You can just kind of yeah go okay. I'll touch this DCE. Whoops. I, Zapdos, it's too late. Exactly. The Zapdos deck just puts on so much pressure, so much aggression, being so threatening, and you sometimes just forget about what how that test Tapu Koko GX. It's a non -ex, It's an aggressive non ex deck that attacks for one energy, right? A GX free free energy attacker. What's that doing in there? <laughs> yeah, you're just like uh, this, this doesn't belong here. Oh wait, I, I've just been knocked out by it. I can see what's yeah. here. We and see the Ditto again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, okay, are we taking okay. are we taking bets on it getting knocked out? Because it's it's pretty likely, right? I don't think I don't think I want to get, <laughs> I want to enter that. We already see a Zapdos with an energy on the bench. We it's a losing see, bet, isn't we it? We already <laughs> see the Jirachi in the active position. Vanessa having two Guzmas in her prizes, so that's opening up the possibility that she's whiffing the other two. I mean, it's just two outs. It's it's and certainly the deck possible. Is still huge at this stage. Yes. She doesn't play anything like a Tapu Lele that would be able to pick it up for her. So. It's quite possible that we see a Ditto Prism Star surviving <laughs> this first turn for the first time. I think ever. <laughs> <laughs> Probably ever. 
So, Stephen, getting a really good start. A lot of search, a lot of nest balls. Yes. Many Having Zorua in play. Already three Zorua, that's amazing. This Having is a little bit better than his uh, setup from the last game. Certainly. <laughs> but here, last year he got two Pokemon searches early as well. So that's, um, let's not forget about this. But here, of course, he used it to set up the Alolan Mug instead of his Zorax. So now he has the ability to... Well, he knows that his Alolan Mug is prized. And uh, he's Alolan just going to... Yeah. yeah, and he's like, okay, well... We can't yeah, basically he's rely doing, on that this exactly. time. He's basically doing the same thing as Benji yesterday, thinking that Alolan Grimer is prized. First turn is basically the highest possibility that I'll ever get for, the, for my opponent with Guzma. So let's put the Ditto Prism Star down and hoping that she with the Guzma. Uh, so, uh, someone's ch I'm guessing that's from the uh, the four Pokemon rankings, uh, I, I believe. Uh, but uh, apparently, so Andres is no stranger to doing well at tournaments. Clearly, because she's uh, top 50, uh, 47th mm -hmm. in the uh, in the Latam rankings. Uh, so by no means, you know, that's yeah. getting good results at cups. And yeah, she's not someone that came here, picked up the theme deck or something. No, she's what? a player that knows what I she's mean, doing. I mean, I, I, so, so uh, I believe she travelled with Gustavo because uh, um, I think they're teammates as well. Oh, that's um, possible. And uh, we were talking yeah, to them. I don't know like, any well, details about that. So. Yeah, no, but it, it's very likely that if they've both kind of gone, we'll have a holiday here. You don't just take a holiday to play Pokemon without being somewhat good at the game. And here we see an interesting play. Addressa played an escape rope. Forcing Steven to put up a new Pokemon and he decides for the Tapu Lele. Now, this is a play where you think, oh yeah, my Tapu Lele, it's a huge, it has a huge amount of HP, it should be rather safe, and there's the goose. <laughs> I, just just, I just wanted to mention that Zapdos decks oftentimes manage to just get free damage modifiers turn one to take those <laughs> knockouts on Tapu Lele. We've seen players like Bird Walters do that on his first turn even. So, this was a play that might have been punished, but Andressa instead opting to go for the Ditto Prism Star, knowing how dangerous this de Alolan Mark is, wanting the to get rid of it. It didn't make it. It didn't make it. I, I thought he had <laughs> a chance. That was as close as we I, were going to get, right? Yeah, I thought, I thought two Guzman surprises. Ditto has a chance. Let's pray for the little guy, <laughs> but no. Nope. No. Not today. But Most Ditto's just aren't having any. There is a Zuru with a DCE. And if Steven can get to a couple of Zoroarks and start trading, he's going to get underway and kind of dig through his deck. Also, a big thing here is that the time judge. is starting to run out. Well, the judge is actually opening up a possibility for Andressa to take this game because four cards, that's not a whole lot. Uh, it really does say Steven doesn't have an awful lot to work with and it's just yes. hoping for something right now. He doesn't now. have a Zorak yet. Four cards, it's basically like the let loose. Might as well have we come from the Zorak. opponent and he gets a Zorak. And an Ultra Ball as well. So he will get yeah. multiple Zorak out this turn. Probably gonna. Tr ah. uh, Ultra oh. Ball trade. Actually, uh, the, the, po po the communication, I would guess, because he wants to get um, two more basic Pokemon, so he doesn't really want to um, trade away this Nest Ball. He wants to he get the knockout. Another basic, exactly. yeah. He wants to get the knockout on the Zapdos, he just wants to keep pressure up. So I think he has to. And yeah, tie the clock is certainly working in Steven's favour. So he trades the communication he and he gets a Sneasel. That's really big. Having a nest ball, so he will get a knockout on the Zapdos this turn. I think he doesn't have enough cards to use the Ultra Ball for another Zora. Not without having to bench. Uh, to, he needs to bench something as well, so I don't think he does. Yeah. He's in a but yeah. slightly awkward situation. For now, he has um, all he needs, are they right? Missing? Oh, no, 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 there's only the Lele into, uh, in play last turn, so the Shrine Punishment is correct. But this turn. Yes. Gets another damage counter on everything. And, and here, we, it's, it's a quick time in the normal round. We have 10 That's minutes cup. left. Oh, yeah, the That's cup, the cup. Of course. Never mind. The announcement being confusing here <laughs> in the background. Unfortunately, we don't have an own room. But I hope the audio is still fine for everyone and you can hear us clearly. Steven now taking a price, evening up the price count, having the Zorak. Having a full board, having an Ultra Ball for next turn to make sure he gets another Zorak. And then Nest Ball, which is going to be for the Zapdos. Oh, also, they forgot the damage on the Tapu Coco GX. Oh, yes, should they have, should have two. Should have 20 damage as well. Should have two on the Tapu Coco GX. Yes, this yeah, might come in big because Steven can, of course, take a knockout on Wait, it. Wait, now just well. the Choice Band away as opposed yeah, to having exactly. Choice Band plus Devoured Fields. Because it, they are even in the price race. But Steven is, um, uh, but Vanette and Dress has return advantage, but Steven can use this Tapu Coco GX to shift the advantage in his favor as well. And yeah, they caught yep, it. Up to date. Steven's putting Perfect. 20 damage there and all good again. So we now have an electric power. power. Choice Band's already in play. 
So already up to fairly <laughs> decent damage. Yeah, it should be the same as the Lele? No, it should be uh, Did you put it down in her first turn? It's actually possible. Oh yeah, because it would be yeah, yeah, it would be the extra okay. three. Um which now makes it considerably easier for the knockout actually. No, actually yeah, okay, it should be two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. She put it in for play last turn. Okay. <laughs> it's the same as the uh, <laughs> both tapus are on the same amount of damage from the shrine yeah. of punishment. But this damage will of course add up. So if the same, so as she's softening up the tapu Lele on Steven's bench, she her own tapu Kroker gets softened up as well. And she doesn't play anything like an ace roller to remove it from play. So those two easy prizes will sit there for Steven. Steven probably doesn't want to take them anytime soon though, because once this Tapu Koko is in with this cat pile, it's starting to become a big threat again and can just the rest is just a rescue stretcher away at that point of getting into play again and taking big knockouts. So the escape board, so the Jirachi can move from the active position. I believe there was another electro power in there, so she's at the two of the damage modifiers. Uh, okay. Ultra for I think it's another Jirachi? It's fine. Either the Oranguru. Throwing away a Professor Kukui, which... Um, well, she's already used the support for turn, yeah. she's just lilied. So she's probably got more look. Yeah. The 20 is probably not going to matter too Kukui much. would have been nice for her this turn, because the one... So like with the Shrine damage, we'll go to 119 with Kukui and three damage modifiers. So that's exactly how much Zapdos would have hit. Well, it's kind of so, unfortunate that she has yeah, already she used really the support her. But the Oranguru here is pretty, pretty helpful, because it means that she can continuously kind of move through her deck. If... If she can get a huge knockout this turn, it would be very big for her because time is running very short. It's only seven and a half minutes left for her. She needs to take five more prizes, but if she could get the huge big knockout this turn, she would be down to three. The Tapulele on the bench is looking is looking pretty frail already. So that's, I believe, three damage modifiers in total this turn. So she, there was one Electro Power earlier. Uh, she's going for another Jirachi. So she, I think she already has the switch in hand. She's looking for the third electric power. She's double checking how many are in the discard to work out her outs. And, and she does have the second. She has the last Guzma in hand. She doesn't know about the ones. I don't know if she's checked particularly uh, for Guzma in her deck. I assume so. It's a card that you know you need. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You, you usually pick up on Guzma's being prized. Yeah, wait, it's, it's not one of the of first. Them. Yeah, it's not one of the first cards you check for because you can't really search them out. So you never re actively search for Guzma. So you just draw to them. But yeah, if so you are up to play, you're probably aware of it. A switch a and or a guru, which is a little unfortunate. Andrea not being able to attack. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually really unfortunate not because that's two of the electric powers she, gone. Yeah, I think she had. Um, Energies in her hand, so it's interesting that she opted. Oh, actually, I'm not sure if she. she oh no, no, the energies were in the Jirachi cards. I'm sorry. So yep. she probably whiffed energies for turn. Very unfortunate for her. Steven Zora, Steven developing his board now. Steven has the turn advantage. He will get the prize advantage. He can still take the top of Kirko. He's already up a game, and time is running out for Andressa. Yeah, so here this he is can looking hit a Lycan Rock attachment to the Lycan Rock. KO the Zapdos on the bench, exactly. or actually, if he can get to the choice band, he can take the Tapu Coco out. Um, yeah, taking out anything at this point is fine for him. Just needs he just needs to take prizes, build up his lead. Just it's, it's looking very grim for Andressa. Yeah. The most threatening thing at this point is probably the Zapdos, because the Girachis she has two on the on the board anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. So because she will be able to send one up after a knockout anyways. Oranguru, of course it's a nice it's a nice boost, so he can just go for the low effort way and knocking off it. Oh my god. So yep. No real need to knock out anything else. So Steven doesn't bother shuffling because he's like, right, I'm gonna mallow. I'm, I don't need to shuffle right now because I'm basically gonna stack my deck and with we see two hearts I need. He's going for Acerola and Devat Field, so yeah. He's preparing to not give up any easy prizes. He doesn't want his Pokemon to get softened up any further. He wa wants to make sure he has heal for next turn. And trades into those two cards, the Devoured Field. Replacing the Shrine of Punishment. Really useful here because now he has so many GXs in play, the Shrine of Punishment is getting even more value. And he's taking a knockout on the rank room, going down to four prices. Um, so the Counter Stadium, really useful this turn. Because he already knows that with the Choice Band in play and the full bench, the Devoured Field will allow him to take the knockout anyway. Uh, fairly easily on the on the Coco um, if he wants to take the two prizes, so he's pretty happy uh, to, in this situation. Like he's already doing enough uh, if he has a full bench 
So and yeah, now we see the disadvantage of those straights up the stack. The tagged out version would have this huge buzzword threat this turn. If being able to replace the David field at the same time, that buzzword would be Volkner. extremely threatening. Okay, Volkner's really nice here because it means that she has already used a lot of her damage uh, modifiers. She's already used double electric power. Uh, uh, yeah. So there's no real risk of like one hit knockouts outside of uh, going for uh, the Tapu Lele. Uh, but two, uh, one Guzma gone. Uh, two in prize, uh, I think the other one's in hand anyway. So yeah. you don't really want to be burning really them yet. You don't know where they are in your prize cards. It's really hard to tell. Andressa really needs a big knockout on the Zorak here. And um, Fortner's not really what she wants. Kukui would have been better for her. Yep. Getting a Kukui out. Actually, yeah, if she used double electro power, that knockout is out of range anyway. Yep. Because Fawn is in her prizes. Also, the Tapu Koko Prism stars in the prizes. Sometimes being a big thing, but with the Tapu Koko GX on her board already, it doesn't matter. There's really everything going wrong for Andressa in this game. Yeah, it's, it sometimes happens where when you're playing cards, uh, decks that rely a little bit on the Prism Star uh, cards, it can and be. Yeah, and yeah, Andressa, I think she's like, I just, just can't. seeing that too much is going wrong. Yeah. Her deck built on consistency. And unfortunately, the price cards can really ha matter, right? When you're playing things like one ofs in your Tapu, uh, Tapu Koko Prism Star and having to get to specific counts, it can be really tricky to kind of pull your way out of an yeah. awkward prizing situation, which is what we saw there. Double Guzma and the Coco. That's hard work to kind of uh, get back into the game. Yeah, consistency is said to be king, but consistency can't win anything, everything. And even the most consistent deck will, run, have, yeah. will run poorly at times. That's just how the Pokemon training card game works. You can't do the same thing all the time. Yep. And yeah, so even with those flexible decks like Zapdos, Junrachi, <laughs> sometimes you have those games where you just can't manage to put on the aggression you would want Exactly, to. and it's really un unfortunate when that happens, especially when you're already in top 32 and you're like, I want to get a couple yeah. more wins and we can make top 8. Yeah. Uh, but it is one of those things that that's where variance comes into this game, exactly. because if the, good, the best player always wins, then it's a little bit boring, and having a little bit of variance can kind of mean we get very exciting back and forth games. We saw in the first one, Stephen having an awkward yeah, start and then pulling it exactly. back. Like it's, you need this to kind of keep the game yeah, exciting. So as exactly. unfortunate as it is, it mm -hmm. does help the game be also, stay interesting. Also, yeah, this is the point where you might want to think about, yeah, do I really want to make my deck as straightforward as possible, playing only Zapdos and Girardi, or do I maybe want to sacrifice some consistency, maybe play less switching options? But instead, put in more options. So if like my main strategy of put, putting up pressure with that just doesn't work out, I have those tackers, plan, I yeah. have a best wall, I have a Nahi Lego. Even if I might fall behind, I have still these big threats that can bring me back into the game. Maybe that is something worth to consider. It's really hard to tell which version of the deck is superior. We've seen Robin win round one. We saw Andressa lose round two, but it could have gone the other yeah, way. Yeah, both could easily well, have easily. switched around very straightforward so, yeah. easily. So with deck, both versions that are so powerful, and it's really hard to tell which one is the best uh, right well, now. Maybe throughout the rest of the day, we'll find out. Um, yes. We'll take a quick break before we're back with uh, the third round of day two. So stay tuned. <laughs> 